salt is the result of acid base reaction depending on the strength of acid and base we have four types of salts salt made up of strong acid and strong base example for strong acid is hcl and for strong base is sodium hydroxide these two react to give sodium chloride salt and water second salt made up of strong acid and weak base Example for strong acid is hydrochloric acid and for weak base is ammonium hydroxide. These two react to give ammonium chloride salt and water. Third salt is salt made up of weak acid and strong base. Example for weak acid is acetic acid. This is also called as ethanoic acid. Example for strong base is sodium hydroxide. When these two react, it will give sodium acetate salt and water. Fourth salt is made up of weak acid and weak base. Example for weak acid is acetic acid and for weak base is ammonium hydroxide. These two react to give ammonium acetate salt and water. These salt solution will have different pH values depending upon the nature of acid and base component salt is made up of. Usually, salt takes the nature of strong acid or strong base component present in it. If we take sodium chloride, this salt is made up of strong acid and strong base. pH value of this salt solution will be neutral that is 7. If we take ammonium chloride, this salt is made up of strong acid and weak base. Strong component of the salt is acidic in nature. So, salt solution will also be acidic in nature with the pH value less than 7. If we take sodium acetate, this is made up of weak acid and strong base. Since strong component is basic in nature, salt solution will be basic in nature with the pH value greater than 7. If we take ammonium acetate, this is made up of weak acid and weak base. Since both the components are weak in nature, it is not possible to predict the pH of this salt solution. Under chemical properties of salts, we will be discussing the preparation of sodium hydroxide, that is NaOH, bleaching powder, that is calcium oxychloride, CaOCl2, baking soda, that is sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, washing soda, that is hydrated sodium carbonate, Na2CO3 dot 10H2O. Sodium hydroxide is prepared by passing current through brine solution. Brine solution means highly concentrated solution of sodium chloride in water. Chemically, when current is passed through sodium chloride solution in water, we get sodium hydroxide base as the product. Since sodium hydroxide is soluble in water, this is also called as alkali. Along with sodium hydroxide, we are getting chlorine gas and hydrogen gas as the byproducts. Let us understand this reaction better by assigning oxidation numbers. Sodium in sodium chloride is plus 1. Chlorine in sodium chloride is minus 1. Hydrogen in water is plus 1. Oxygen in water is minus 2. Sodium in sodium hydroxide is plus 1. Oxygen in sodium hydroxide is minus 2. Hydrogen in sodium hydroxide is plus 1. Chlorine in Cl2 is 0. Hydrogen in H2 is 0. Now, if we observe the formation of chlorine from sodium chloride, we can see oxidation number of chlorine is increased from minus 1 to 0. Or we can tell we have added an electronegative element chlorine to sodium chloride to get Cl2 as the product. Both these definitions mean sodium chloride has undergone oxidation to give Cl2 as the oxidized product. In the same manner, if we observe the formation of hydrogen from water, we can see oxidation number of hydrogen is decreased from plus 1 to 0. Or we can tell we have removed an electronegative element oxygen from water to get hydrogen as the product. All these three definitions mean water has undergone reduction to give hydrogen as the reduced product. 
since we have both oxidation and reduction in this reaction this is an example for redox reaction keep in mind always oxidized product come near anode and reduced product come near cathode in this reaction chlorine is the oxidized product and hydrogen is the reduced product so we will be collecting chlorine gas near anode and hydrogen gas near cathode in this reaction we got alkali sodium hydroxide and chlorine gas as the products so this reaction is also called as chlor alkali process also we split sodium chloride by using current so this reaction can also be called as electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride all three products of chlor alkali process are of great commercial use few of them can be seen here Electrolysis of brine is an industrial process which is carried out on a large scale, but we can look at the process on a smaller scale in the laboratory. Brine is a saturated solution of sodium chloride. We don't want the electrodes to become part of this reaction, and so we use carbon electrodes. From the sodium chloride, we have positive sodium ions, Na+, and negative chloride ions, Cl-. And from the water, we have positive hydrogen ions, H plus and negative hydroxide ions OH minus. When the current flows you will begin to see tiny bubbles of gas forming at each electrode. Both hydrogen and chlorine gas are formed but can you work out which electrode produces which gas? Pause the video and see if you can work it out. The chlorine is formed at the anode that's the positive electrode and the hydrogen is formed at the cathode, that's the negative electrode. Did you get it right? Let's look at what's going on at each electrode. The anode is positive and attracts the negative chloride and hydroxide ions. The chloride ions give up their electrons to the anode and are oxidised to chlorine molecules. Two ions need to be oxidised to make a diatomic chlorine molecule and two free electrons are produced. The electrons are given up to the anode and the chlorine gas bubbles up to the surface of the cell. If you collected the gas from the anode in a test tube, then you would be able to see the pale green colour of the chlorine gas. It will turn damp blue litmus paper red, showing that it is acidic, and then it bleaches it. Well, what about the cathode? It is negatively charged and attracts the positive sodium and the hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions each gain an electron from the electrode to form hydrogen atoms. Here's the equation. Two hydrogen atoms then bond to form a diatomic hydrogen molecule, and that's the hydrogen gas given off. The gas here is colourless and can be collected in a test tube. The test to prove that it is hydrogen is done with a burning wooden splint, and you'll hear a familiar pop as the hydrogen burns. The ions left in the solution are the positive sodium ions and the negative hydroxide ions, which combine to form sodium hydroxide. Overall, the electrolysis of brine has produced hydrogen, chlorine and sodium hydroxide, and so we can write a summary equation. Concentrated sodium chloride solution plus water, when electrolyzed, gives sodium hydroxide solution, hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. These products are very useful, and the electrolysis of brine is done on a much larger industrial scale. Chlorine is used to kill bacteria, and it is soluble in water. If you've ever visited a public swimming pool, then you'll be familiar with the smell of chlorinated water, and it's also used to sterilise water in the main's water supply. What's more, chlorine is one of the main ingredients of bleach, which is used in a lot of cleaning products. But this is only scratching the tip of the iceberg, as chlorine is used to make dry cleaning ingredients, electrical insulators, building materials, refrigerated gases, weed killer, pesticides, antiseptic Some of the hydrogen and chlorine from the industrial process is combined to form hydrogen chloride gas. It's a rather unpleasant gas, 
but it dissolves in water to produce hydrochloric acid, which is a very useful acid. It too can be used for cleaning metal, but it is also used for producing chloride salts. Sodium hydroxide is another cleaning product, and the most common use for it in the home is for cleaning ovens and unblocking drains. That's a rather amazing collection of uses from our original brine. Preparation of bleaching powder, that is CaOCl2. Action of chlorine gas on dry slaked lime, that is calcium hydroxide, gives us bleaching powder, that is CaOCl2, which is called as calcium oxychloride. Along with CaOCl2, we get water also as the product. Though we write the chemical formula of bleaching powder as CaOCl2, its real chemical composition is very complex. Coming to the bleaching action. Bleaching powder reacts with carbon dioxide from air forming calcium carbonate and releases chlorine gas. This released chlorine gas is actually responsible for the bleaching action. Released chlorine gas further reacts with water which may be present in moisture or in the environment and releases nascent oxygen. This nascent oxygen being a good oxidizing agent is capable of bleaching the surface. Then one can ask the question, why don't we use chlorine gas straight as the bleaching agent? Reason is, since chlorine is a gas, it has to be supplied in a cylinder which becomes expensive. Instead, if we convert the chlorine gas into solid calcium oxychloride form, supplying becomes cheap and handy. During the use, by reacting with atmospheric carbon dioxide and water, chlorine gets released in situ. Few uses of bleaching powder are listed here. Kindly go through. Preparation of baking soda, that is NaHCO3. When sodium chloride reacts with water, carbon dioxide and ammonia, this gives us baking soda. Chemically, this is sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate. Along with baking soda, we get ammonium chloride salt also as the product. NaHCO3 salt is made up of strong base sodium hydroxide and weak acid H2CO3. Since the strong component of the salt is basic in nature, salt sodium bicarbonate is also basic in nature with pH greater than 7. Because of its basic nature, baking soda can be used to neutralize acids. All of us know that baking soda is used for cooking purpose in the kitchen. Maybe to make the fried item more crispy or for faster cooking by maintaining an alkaline environment. During cooking, sodium bicarbonate releases carbon dioxide upon heating. This released carbon dioxide produces bubbles thus making the food item spongy. Other uses of baking soda For making baking powder Baking powder is a combination of baking soda and a mild edible acid like tartaric acid. Baking powder is specifically used while making bread and cake. During heating, baking soda reacts with acid present in the system and releases carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide causes bread and cake to rise, making them soft and spongy. Since baking soda is basic in nature, it can be used as antacid. It neutralizes excess acid present in the stomach and provides relief. Another use is in soda acid fire extinguisher. Let us understand the construction of this fire extinguisher. These are simple in construction and simple to operate. The cylindrical portion of this fire extinguisher contains sodium bicarbonate. Concentrated sulfuric acid is sealed in a glass bottle 
and fixed to its knob. In case of fire, if you strike at the knob, the glass bottle breaks. Then the sulfuric acid reacts with sodium bicarbonate to generate carbon dioxide that is then directed on the fire. Since carbon dioxide does not support burning, this extinguishes the fire. Preparation of washing soda that is Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. When sodium carbonate salt is dissolved in water and allowed to undergo recrystallization, we get washing soda that is hydrated sodium carbonate. 10 water molecules present per Na2CO3 is called as water of crystallization. Na2CO3 salt is made up of strong base sodium hydroxide and weak acid H2CO3. Since the strong component of Na2CO3 is basic in nature, washing soda is also a basic salt with pH greater than 7. Few uses of washing soda are listed here. Kindly go through. Water of crystallization is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt. Example, hydrated copper sulfate. This is CuSO4.5H2O. For one CuSO4, we have five water molecules. So, we have five water of crystallization for hydrated copper sulfate. When we heat hydrated copper sulfate, it loses water of crystallization and becomes simply copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color and copper sulfate is white in color. Though we have water of crystallization, hydrated copper sulfate looks dry. Second example, washing soda. This is Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. Since we are having 10 water molecules, for 1 Na2CO3, washing soda is having 10 water of crystallization. When we heat washing soda, it loses water of crystallization and becomes simply sodium carbonate. Plaster of Paris, that is calcium sulfate half H2O. Calcium sulfate with 2 water of crystallization is called as gypsum. And the name for this is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Calcium sulfate with half water of crystallization is plaster of Paris and is called as calcium sulfate hemihydrate. When gypsum is heated to 373 Kelvin, it gives us plaster of Paris. Half water molecule is present per calcium sulfate means we are having one water molecule for two calcium sulfate. Plaster of Paris is a white powder and on mixing with water, it changes back to gypsum which is a hard solid mass. Uses of Plaster of Paris are listed here. Kindly go through. Gypsum is a natural mineral. It is a very important ingredient in cement as it controls the rate of setting. If we do not add gypsum to cement, cement paste will become hard very fast. Gypsum is not only used in construction industry but also used as fertilizer. It is a very good source of calcium for plants. Calcium plays very important role in the growth of strong stem and branches. The chemical name of gypsum is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Gypsum is also used in making plaster of Paris. Let's learn more about plasters of Paris. Plaster of Paris is obtained by heating gypsum and removing some amount of water from it. And its chemical name is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Plaster of Paris got its name because it was first prepared from gypsum, found in Paris. 
plaster of Paris is very fine white powder and thus it is used in making blackboard chalk and setting bones after surgery. It is also used in statue art and construction works.